starting with the foot. And the veins of the foot can be divided into dorsal veins on the top of the foot and plantar veins on the bottom of the foot. The dorsal venous network of the foot is an example of superficial veins found on the upper surface of the foot. And this network drains into the great saphenous vein medially and into the small saphenous vein and the anterior tibial veins laterally. On the plantar aspect of the foot is another network of veins known as the plantar venous network. And this network is also superficially located and it mainly drains into the medial and lateral marginal veins. Other veins found in the foot include the dorsal venous arch of the foot, which receives the metatarsal veins of the foot and is relatively easy to palpate and visualise on a bare foot, and the plantar venous arch of the foot, which is formed by the superficial veins of the sole of the foot and accompanies the arterial plantar arch. The arteries of the foot are accompanied by veins of the same name, even for the superficial veins. And now let's follow the veins upward again towards the leg. The small saphenous vein is also sometimes referred to as the short saphenous vein. And this vein is a continuation of the lateral marginal vein, which we mentioned before. It ascends between the superficial and deep fascia in the distal third of the calf, and it penetrates the deep fascia at the midline of the calf, before ascending superficially to the gastrocnemius muscle, and eventually terminates in the popliteal vein within the popliteal fossa, which we looked at before and we can see here. The small saphenous vein has many branches, which communicate with the great saphenous vein, which we'll look at now. The great saphenous vein, sometimes referred to as the long saphenous vein, is the longest vein in the human body, as we can see here. This vein is a continuation of the medial marginal vein of the foot and ends distal to the inguinal ligament of the femoral vein. The great saphenous vein almost twists around the leg as it ascends superficial to the medial malleolus, crosses the distal third of the tibia anteroposterolaterally, laterally, passes behind the medial tibial and femoral condyles, and then ascends up the medial aspect of the thigh. It then passes through the saphenous opening and opens into the femoral vein, joining the veins of the leg into one. Along its course, the great saphenous vein is accompanied by branches of the medial femoral cutaneous nerve, and it receives several tributaries from all the veins of the leg, including from the tibial malleolar region and from the calf. Many perforating veins connect the great and small saphenous veins to the deep veins along this path. And as we mentioned on the last slide, the great saphenous vein drains into the femoral vein, which is the end of the lower limb and the beginning of the abdomen. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.